Hi everyone, it's Kate from The Fold Line. I am back in central London, which can only mean one thing. It's so the trends time. So this, we're looking, kind of thinking spring at the moment, um, although it's raining and quite cold, but apparently spring is on the way. So I'm going to head to Topshop first, and then I'm going to go look around to all the other shops and find some good stuff for you guys to sew this spring. So I'm in Topshop and the lighting is not very nice in here. Um, there's lots of, I think in terms of fabrication, the thing that I've really noticed is there's lots of, it's all kind of powdery colours, so real pastels. Mixing of prints seems to be quite a big thing on the same garment, so dresses that have two prints, kind of like clashing prints. Um, everything's quite casual this summer, I think uh, lots of denim, lots of jeans, t-shirts obviously, um, and lots of sort of chunky knitwear as well. Um, but I've seen some good stuff, I think I'm going to carry on hunting. So I've now been into um, And Other Stories, Warehouse, Zara, Mango, Oasis, where else? There's a few other places, sorry, it's very bright. And um, I think things that I've taken home is, is quite a lot of tailoring. Um, dresses are either very, very short or midi length. Um, there's a lot of quite tight fitting, gosh, it's now getting very bright. Um, a lot of tight, really tight fitting um, skirts, like pencil skirts, um, just very 90s. Um, in terms of styling, things like dresses, long dresses with boots. Um, yeah, I think I've got I've got some patterns in mind. And the other thing, I think the real thing that has really is everywhere is giant sleeves. And I know some people don't like that, but big sleeves are still everywhere. So I'm going to carry on hunting in the sunshine. It's so nice. We've got a bit of sun. So I have done all my work, I've been into Liberty now, I've had a good look and I'm just sneaking into, I don't know if you're ever in Oxford Street, go to the H&M Home Shop because it's amazing if you're looking for anything for your house, um, they've got really, really good stuff. So um, yeah, we're going to go in and have a look around because, you know, why not as I'm here. I am back in town, I have done my homework and I have got some really good stuff to talk you through. I'm going to start by saying this is going to be an extremely long video, so grab yourself a hot drink like I've got and settle in because there is a lot to talk about. So first things first, I'm going to talk about fabrication, um, obviously fabric is one half of, of the project. Um, things to look for if you want to kind of be and trend the season. Um, lots and lots of pastel colours, pastel colours were everywhere, quite muted um, pastels, so kind of mint green but very sort of muted mint green, um, pale pinks, rusty colours but as well. Um, the other thing is loads of creams and sort of taupey colours, so sandy, taupey, creamy colours. In terms of print, there wasn't a huge amount of print again this season, mainly planes. Um, the prints that were there tended to be ditzy florals, um, quite a lot of them on a darker background. Um, in terms of the types of fabrics, um, it was a lot of cotton and a lot of linen, I would say. Those were the two core things alongside um, fake leathers and um, I guess what you call like more technical fabrics like um, raincoat fabrics. There were quite a lot of interesting fabrics, but I think kind of core things are linen and cotton, which is great because obviously they're breathable, perfect for summer. So I'm going to start by talking about some dresses. 
Then I've got some sort of details, um, which I saw on lots of different garments and I've got some lovely patterns for it. I've got three pieces of outerwear. I've got a couple of tops and bottoms. So there's quite a bit to get through. I'm gonna get cracking now. Um, my laptop is here, so if I keep looking down, that's why, because um, I'm looking at what I'm talking about. Um, you will notice I'm in a new location today. I'm in my kitchen because my sewing room, I've got a leak, so I've been banished from there. Anyway, right, let me get going. So the first thing, dresses, um, wrap dresses. Obviously every summer there is a wrap, a variation of a wrap dress. Um, this summer I really love this sort of shape that I saw everywhere. You can see it now, I'm showing it to you on the screen. Um, kind of a, um, a kind of very relaxed, grown on sleeve, um, a, a tie at the side, really simple construction actually, if you look at all of them. Um, these were everywhere and you can see um, in terms of colours, those sort of muted pastels I was talking about. So the pattern that I've got, which I saw instantly and thought I know exactly the right one, is the Bellbird wrap dress and top from Common Stitch. Um, this comes in sizes six to 20. It's available on the online shop. Um, this, they're an Australian pattern company if you haven't come across them before and I really love their style. So this was pretty bang on. I was really chuffed when I kind of thought of it. Um, it's got that same sort of sleeve type as the ones that you sh we showed you. Um, it's, yeah, it's also very simple in terms of construction. So you can see from the line drawing, it's really basic actually. And if you are a beginner maker, this is something that would be really nice for you to make. The top version of this is also lovely um, and I think would be really useful. So in terms of getting something that you can make multiple times and get a bit more use out of, I think this would be a very good version. So next up on the draft front, we have got, I'm showing you now, these um, sort of almost like coats that look like dresses with a bit of a sort of tr trench coat feel to them, um, sort of outerwear that is a dress. There were lots of these. In terms of colours and fabrics, as you can see here, that sort of taupey trench coat colour, they were all made in the same what colour. So if you're looking for something that you want to be really kind of close to what you found on the high street, go for these sort of muted, kind of deep creamy taupey colours. So I've got two options for this. Um, I've got, the first one I've got is the Pilvy Coat Dress from Named Clothing. This comes in sizes, four to 22. Um, this, I must note, is a jersey pattern. So it, um, the ones I showed you were woven, but this I thought was so close to what we'd seen that I couldn't not include it. It's a really fantastic pattern. If you're looking for fabric for this, I'm pretty sure that you would need something like a ponty, um, something with kind of really decent structure so that it can hold the shape because it's quite an involved make. But I love this and I think it would be bang on for this winter, for this winter, for this spring. Um, the other one I got was the Linda wrap dress from Just Patterns. This comes in sizes 6 to 18. It's not available in the online shop, but I thought this was very close. Um, it's actually quite a con simple construction if I show you the line drawing. Um, it's got some gathering on the, um, on, the, on the bodice and on the skirt just below the bust, so it means that there isn't bust darts. Um, I really like the sort of grown on collar detail, I think that was really close to what I'd seen. And um, there are, yeah, just um, patch pockets as well, so it's quite, again, quite a simple construction, but I thought pretty close to the sort of trench dress that I show you, let's show you that I showed you. Um, next up, um, so we've kind of got, I, I guess these are sort of details, but things that I could think you could incorporate into other garments, but a kind of a feel, I guess. So the first one is this big puff sleeve. Um, this was everywhere, it was on tops, dresses. Um, the sleeve, the big sleeve is still very much here. Um, I really like this sort of square neckline on the spotty dress of the Zara, I think it's beautiful. Um, so the pattern I've got for this is the Adriana dress from Friday Pattern Company. Um, this comes in sizes um, 6 to 28, it's available on the online shop. Sorry, cup of tea. And I thought this was pretty close. So it's got that big dramatic sleeve that we're looking for. Um, the neckline is slightly different and I 
if you wanted to create that square and neckline, which I have to say was on a lot of garments, I think you could do that with this pattern. So the interesting thing about this pattern is it's got, across the shoulder, it's got a bit of elastic in kind of encased into the seam. And that means that you can add quite a lot of more, more volume into the sleeve piece. It's got this big dramatic sleeve at the bottom. This would be easy enough to make shorter as well. So if you wanted to make it more closer to the kind of variations that I showed you, I think you could shorten this and get that same look. But I thought this would be a really good starting point as a, as a kind of feel of this kind of big puffy sleeve, which was everywhere. So I think that was a good, a good one. Next up, um, in terms of details, shearling. There was a lot of shearling tops that had shearling, shearling, shearing. Sorry, gosh, not that that would be very different things. Fluffy, elastic, um, shearing across the bust, shearing as a detail. Um, it really was, and definitely around the cuffs of loads and loads of garments. I saw that everywhere. Um, so the pattern that I've got to talk to you about is the Deo dress and blouse from Mason. Um, this comes in sizes 8 to 20. It's available in my shop. Um, this has, is a, I think I spoke about this in another video, I think I did. Um, it's a very simple garment to make um, and the shearing is the thing that adds a sort of detail to it, but it's got the same cuffs as I, that I saw everywhere. It's got, um, and, and it creates that kind of bigger bell sleeve, which is also everywhere. Um, I really love the top version of this. I think it's fantastic. And they, there's some shearing around the waist as well to add a bit of um, shaping. But yeah, I think this dress, so the line drawing I'm showing you of the dress, I think if you added another, you could make it very similar to the Zara dress if you added a tier to it at the bottom. So then you'd get that sort of tiered dress. Um, which was kind of definitely moved from winter through into um, spring, that sort of tier, tiers, layers of ruffles. Um, so shearing was everywhere. The next detail that I saw on so many different garden gardens, garments, I'm looking at my garden, that, that is why, um, is a sort of twist, um, which you can see from these two pictures these sort of thing, like wrapping around each other, lots and lots of dresses that kind of twist at the front and tie at the back. And um, I think I found a really fantastic pattern, which was really spot on. So the pattern that I've got is the Meridian dress from Paper Cut Patterns. This comes in sizes six to 18. It's available on the online shop. And this was almost spot on. I blooming love this dress. I think if you, want to make something really interesting this spring, I think this might be it. So I'll show you the line drawing so you can see what I'm talking about. It's got this amazing piece at the front that crosses over and you tie it at the back. Um, Rachel's made this dress. It's really interesting. I love the pattern cutting of it. And I think, you know, if you want to try something a bit different, I think this could be a really lovely option. So it's, apart from this kind of twist at the front, the dress is quite simple. Um, it's got bust, actually no, it doesn't have bust darts because you get that from the top bust. It's got um, darts on the front of the skirt. It's a quite a simple construction, but I think it kind of, yeah, you, it's definitely a bit of a statement. And yeah, I love, I love this. I've actually got it upstairs ready to make at some point in who knows when. So yes, so that is that. I thought that was quite a good one. So now we're going to talk about outerwear. Now I've got three bits of outerwear to talk to you about. And I, the reason I've got so many is because I think although it is spring, it is definitely still quite chilly and we're all definitely wearing coats and jackets at the moment. So the first jacket that I've got to show you is um, this sort of cropped oversized jacket that looks like a bit like a shirt, like a shacket. Um, but made in a heavier cotton or a heavier wool. You can see the one from other stories in the middle is made in a wool. Um, these were everywhere. Um, so these came in lots of different variants. So you could either go for something like the Topshop version that was quite cropped, or you could go for something like the ASOS one, which is really oversized and baggy. So I think if you're gonna make one thing this spring, and you want to be kind of on trend, this sort of shape I think is one to do. 
and luckily there are some great patterns to go with this. So I've picked two options. So the first one, which was the one that kind of sprung to mind as soon as I saw it and I've spoken about it before, it's the Stacker Jacket from Paper Cut Patterns. This comes in sizes four to 20. It's available on the online shop. I thought this one was really, really close. It's got that, those big oversized pockets. Um, and there are two variations with this jacket. So you can see from the line drawings here, you can either have them with the kind of um, flaps around the, the kind of just above the bust, um, or you can have kind of big patch pockets. I think this jacket is a really lovely, lovely shape. And I thought it was very, very close to what we'd seen. If you want something a little bit more relaxed or a bit longer, um, I have included, I thought the unisex jacket unisex Ilford jacket from Friday Pattern Company which comes in sizes 6 to 28 would work really fantastically too. So you can see from this pattern um, it's actually quite a simple construction it has a feeling of a shirt that is a jacket um, you can make it in a lightweight cotton or a viscose if you want to make it feel a bit more drapey but it ha definitely has the feel of those sorts of jackets that I was showing you. I think um, you can see from the line drawings, there's a longer version and a cropped version. So you do get quite a lot of bang for your buck with this pattern, especially as you could also make one for a man in your life as well if you wanted to, which I think, you know, if you're that sort of person and nice and generous, then great. Um, but I thought those two were really kind of close to what I'd seen. Right, next up in the outerwear department, we have got um, these sort of, they're kind of like an in-between an anorak and a parka coat. Um, these were everywhere in quite interesting technical kind of fabrics. I think you could totally do this in a cotton as well and it would work really nicely. But um, yeah, I saw a lot of these with a sort of drawstring, with a hood. Um, but actually not too difficult to construct and quite a lot of them weren't lined as well. So I've got two patterns for you guys. The first one is the hoodie parka coat from the assembly line. This comes in sizes six to, tw oh, sorry, eight to 26. It's available on the online shop. I thought this one was really close actually. Um, I'll show you the line drawing. It's got the hood. It feels a bit like a park coat and it feels a bit like an anorak, which was similar to the two that I showed you. Um, this is also unlined, this coat. Um, it's a really lovely pattern. I think this would be a really nice one if you feel like you want to tackle a bit more outerwear. It's got lots of great seam lines so you can practice your top stitching. Um, it's a really interesting cut actually and I really like the way that the hood sort of comes down at the front. I think that's really interesting. The other pattern that I chose for this is the TN31 Parker from Merchant and Mills. I really like this because it feels a bit like a mix of a parka and a bomber coat. It's got that little um, bit around the top that's similar to a bomber jacket. Um, it doesn't have the hood, but I think this vibe was quite close to lots of stuff I saw on the high street and probably the slightly younger end of the market. Um, but it's got the drawstring around the waist and nice big pockets. Um, it's a really cool pattern and the great thing with Merchant and Mills um, styles are quite relaxed fit so you have less issues in terms of fitting but I thought this was a really good one and I think quite close as well. So last but not least in the outerwear department um, the trench coat I know it is not um, not breaking any sort of new exciting boundaries with the trench coat but it is an absolute classic shape and it comes out every year in a, in a variant so really, if you make the time to make one, you'll definitely get a lot of wear out of it. So you can see the two versions that I've got here. One is from Marks and Spencer's, which is quite classic. There were a lot of ones which were very similar to a real classic trench coat. And then the one on the left from Zara um, were sort of more lightweight, a bit more relaxed, um, had less of the trench coat features, quite often didn't have a fastening around the front. So. I guess it's almost like a bit more of a layering piece than an actual kind of proper full-on jacket. Um, so again, I've got two patterns for this. So um, I have got, for the more relaxed feeling one, I've got the Laundress trench coat and jacket from Origuse. This comes in sizes um, six to 16, so it's quite a small size range for these. 
um, but it's a really lovely coat and I thought it was quite close to the ones I'd seen. So you can see from the line drawing, it's got some of the features of a trench coat. It's got the sort of, um, what's that called at the front? It's not a storm flap, you know what I mean? The sort of flap across the pocket. Um, it's got um, a proper collar, um, it, but you, I think with this, it's like the fabrication. So you can see that it's made in a sort of lighter weight drapey fabric. It feels closer to that sort of Zara jacket, um, but a lot of the great details of a trench coat. I think this is a really strong pattern, actually. I've seen a lot of them made up on Instagram and um, I think it's really nice. There's also a short version of the jacket, which I think of the, yes, of the jacket, which I think would work really well as well. Um, Actually, the short one's really nice, just looking at it now. Yeah, so that's the first one I've got. The second one I've got, if we want to go down the more classic one, so if you are deciding between the two and you think I really want to make something really proper, I'd probably go for this, which is the um, Luzerne trench coat from Deer and Doe. I hope I have said that correctly. Um, so this comes to... UK 6... To 16 in a paper pattern but they also go up to an EU 52 in digital so if you um, are in the in the if you're not in the paper size banding which is up to a 16 then from their website you can get um, a bigger more expanded size range so this it's an absolute classic. I mean it's got everything it's got the princess seams it's got the double breasted features um, this would be a really nice project to undertake if you want to get some do something involved this spring I think this would be lovely so don't shy away from taking on something more advanced I think this could be really fantastic and something that you'd get a lot of wear out of so in terms of fabrications for this um, I would probably there were um, lots of sort of dark greens like the M&S one I showed you lots of camel colors obviously because that's more traditional and then rusty colors as well so those would be the colours I was look, I'd look out for. So that is it on the outerwear front. In terms of sort of tops and blouses, um, this one I'm showing you, a classic sort of, oh, sorry, that was the postman. Um, a classic sort of blouse, um, something really, really kind of traditional and beautiful. There were lots of these in kind of, you can see here, especially the one from and other stories in a lightweight linen or of voile, um, slightly sheer. Um, but also on the sort of other extreme, there were quite a lot of um, faux suede shirts as well, if you want to go down that route. But I think also it would look lovely in linens. So I've picked, um, the Olya shirt dress, shirt and dress from Paper Theory Patterns. Um, I picked this one, this comes in sizes 6 to 20 and available on the online shop. I picked this one because it's really interesting in terms of the construction and let's be honest, it's nice to have something that kind of mixes things up a little bit. Also, the dress version of this is beautiful and I think would be bang on trend for this um, summer too. So I'll show you the line drawing. It's a really cool cut. So the shirt, the kind of um, sleeve piece you can see from here spans the front right away to the back of the shirt. Um, so you don't have a traditional arm hole. I think that's really cool. So it adds, it instantly makes it less traditional, feel a bit more kind of, it's definitely more relaxed fitting. Um, and then it's got these quite interesting pocket details. It's a really interesting pattern. I think it's one that I actually definitely want to embark on this, this um, try and make this this summer. I think this would be a really nice one to make. And let's be honest, who doesn't need a kind of classic shirt in their wardrobe? It's always something that you're gonna pull out each season. If you want to be bang on trend, I would probably upsize, go up a size to keep it nice and sort of baggy that everything was quite baggy. Um, so if you want to, if you're kind of more trend based, then maybe, yeah, go up a size. And so then it's really nice, loose fitting and quite relaxed fitting. And um, the other thing in terms of tops that I noticed is these sort of peasant tops were everywhere with frills, um, quite a lot of them made in cotton. Um, you can see again uh, on the Zara version, it's got that shearling um, cuff that I was talking about earlier on. Um, all of them have got slightly bell-shaped sleeves. Um, 
I've got a couple of options of kind of just two lovely patterns that I think would tie into this feeling but if you've got anything in your pattern stash already that kind of feels a bit peasanty there was definitely a lot of that about. So the two patterns that I've got to talk to you about the first one is the Bloomsbury Brows from Nina Lee. Um, this comes in sizes 6 to 20. Um, it's available on the online shop but you can see here it's got that lovely big frill that was in the wet on the warehouse blouse. Um, I think this is a really really good pattern I think you'd get quite a lot of wear out of it it comes with um there are two variations so there's a much bigger frill and a much narrower frill if you wanted to be closer to what I saw in the shops I'd go big um and also I definitely think if you've got a blouse that you sh shape pattern that you have already cutting a seam line and adding in a frill is something that is quite easy to do um that would be you know a really good thing and I think it is yeah it's just a lovely pattern and I think it's something that you'd wear kind of season after season um the other thing that I picked was the Sudley blouse and dress from Megan Nielsen um this is comes in sizes 8 to 16 um it's available on the online shop um I really liked this I think this is a really lovely pattern and I think it's something again it tied into quite a lot of the other things I was sort of showing you um so the dress is you can see it, there's a dress and top version of this um it's got a gathered it it's again quite loose fitting it's got this lovely little tie detail around the front you can also wear it with a tie detail at the back um there's a variation with a collar there's lots of different things that you can do with this pattern I also like the idea of, I'm showing you the dress version, I like the idea of adding a couple of tiers to the um, top and making it into a sort of midi length dress. I think that would be kind of very on trend for the season. Um, but I thought that had that sort of peasanty feel and I think that would be quite a good kind of base pattern to kind of get tucked in on. So the last bit to talk to you guys about is um, bottoms so I haven't really done bottoms I've got two things to talk to you about because I'm quite conscious that I've gone on for a long time now <laughs> um so I've got I'm showing you two different types there are a lot of tracksuits everywhere at the moment worn with tailoring um cropped tops um yeah so tracksuit bottoms everywhere in loads of different colors the other variation are a slightly more traditional but wide leg cropped trouser which again has moved through from last summer so if you've made something from last summer it's definitely going to be in this summer again so the two patterns that i've got one is the hudson pants from true bias um, i thought this was a re this is a really good pattern a lot of people have made it you've probably you might have even done it but to like wear this with a tailor jacket and it looks fantastic and it would be bang on trend so it's quite an easy construction you, I can show you the line drawings it shouldn't take you too long and basically you can either wear it out and about and try and look smart or you can wear it lounging around at home so you get double double it's a double whammy pattern and the last one is the um oh I never know how to say this Persephone pants and shorts from Anna Allen um these come in sizes 8 to 20, available on the online shop. Um, I love this. It's a the interesting thing about these um, cropped trousers is that they don't have a side seam, so you cut the entire leg panel in one piece, which I think is really interesting. A lot of people have made these and love them. Um, I have just picked this one because I thought it was interesting, but there are loads and loads of um, other kind of quite similar wide leg jeans. Um, the closet case files, um, Pietra pants would be a good option. Um, the um, oh god, I'm not going to sit here and list them all. You know, you know what I'm talking about. So anyway, I hope that was useful. I will pop a link down below to the blog post. Everything is linked down below as well if you want to go and look at the patterns. And yes, I hope that has inspired your spring wardrobe. And obviously I will be back at some point and I'll do a summer one as well with a bit of an update. So anyway, I hope that has inspired some spring making and we'll be back soon with another one. Bye. Bye.